We are back. A's baseball, past, present, and future. I'm Ralph Tycho with the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. And the co-hostess, she's, I guess I'm the host. I'm a co-host. She's a co-hostess. Um, Nancy Finley. How are you, Nancy? Great. Thank you. What would you like to be called? Co-hostess? Would you like to be called Queen of Siam? Uh, <laughs> we can name you Morning anything you like. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's all semantics. Co-host. You're, um, co-host for fine. those of you tu- tuning in for the first time, um, Nancy is the niece, uh, in quotes, of Charlie Finley the daughter of Charlie's cousin, Carl. And um, she called Charlie Uncle Charlie. So as oh. I told her, I called my Uncle Boris Uncle <laughs> Boris, and he was no more than my mother's cousin. Okay. So how explain um, – oh, can't I, explain kin. You we understand. didn't have kin. You, you use the expression, I'll bet, kin. Just guessing. No. I haven't heard oh. that. Okay. Have not. Well, I heard um, that with Barbie. He, I had always had a kin with my Barbie, but that's the only time I've heard it. Your Barbie doll. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. But okay. <laughs> that's how I know Ken. But um, okay. I, I always oh. wondered why Barbie had hair and Ken did not. They only had hair on their heads, from what I know. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, no. Ken uh, had. Ken had hair on his on the top. Maybe it was from uh, what you know. Plastic, uh, and that's supposed to get by me. That's plastic. Yeah. Yes. I I didn't see any hair <laughs> anywhere. And, and yes, the they only plot. did. Introduce I, our esteemed guest, please, if you would, Nancy. Yes. Yes, my very very good friend, like a, like family, Marcy Bachman. Who, who is a former columnist for the Oakland Tribune and then the Contra Costa Times for many years. Marcy is our guest today. Marcy, welcome to the yes. Comfortably Zone Radio Network, the A Show, and uh, podcasting. This is your first podcast experience. And, and Marcy, it is. It is. And Marcy, <laughs> My first podcast experience. Mar- I, have to, well, I forgot to say, Marcy covered our World Series, when no other female did, a uh, journalist. So wow. So broke ground. Um, I wonder if you two women know uh, Sherry Davis, who broke ground on the Giants' side as the first public address announcer in um, female p- public address announcer. What year was that? Uh, later on. Uh, sometime in the um, in the 80s or 90s, probably. You see, Marcy I, paved the way for her. Yes, that was. Um, I I don't I didn't know her, but um, Marcy paved the yeah. way. I mean, hey, Marcy, thank you for that. Because anytime women are empowered, men are empowered, and folks don't realize that. A lot of folks don't realize that. Um, and Marcy well, knew Charlie and Dad from um, her own perspective. Right. Well, then let's uh, let's start with this. I want to ask you to, to. I want to learn a little bit about you. Did you become a journalist because you were a sports fan, or um, were you drawn to it after you became a journalist? I became a journalist because I had a little boy to support and I had a way to earn a living. And I'd always gotten A's in English, and I thought, well, gee, I bet I can write. And uh, what do you know? I could. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote a sports column in the in the mid '60s. It was called uh, Mike Martin Diamond in the Rough, and Mike Martin, Michael Martin, is my son. And I had to use his name because women were not allowed to even come near sports in those days. And you oh. covered the Giants, didn't you? Uh, I, I interviewed a lot of yes. Giants. 
back in uh oh gee in the early seventies yeah well, so um I guess you remember Charlie Fox quite well, one of my uh lifetime acquaintances um, from the those giants days and uh john de quisto and and those folks um how did it come that you went from the Giants to the A's? <laughs> well, it just that's what I, the papers I was working for at the time. I was working for the Stockton Record originally, way back in the 60s. And uh, the uh, farm team were, were the Stockton Ports. And I, so I got to cover the Stockton Ports at that time. Um, that was really unusual because... And also, I'd like to point out that it was very difficult for a woman because we were not allowed on the field. We weren't allowed in the clubhouse. Uh, ever, all the uh, things that we did were like uh, feature stories on the players, and that was done. Um, we would be interviewing them, but not on the field and not in the clubhouse. Uh, and that lasted for a long, long time. Women, nowadays, women are everywhere in sports. In those days, they were nowhere. They weren't allowed anywhere. Is that how you uh, were? Did you go to the Oakland Tribune before covering the A's? Yeah, yeah. I I wound up working for the Oakland Tribune, and because of my background and because I had met Charlie, Charlie Finley, and Charlie and I hit it off right away because he liked Oscar. Oscar. Pardon me? At Oscar's Restaurant. In Oakland. Yes, that's where we met. Mm-hmm. Because Bill Fazé, who was the lead, lead columnist for the Tribune, um, and I shared an office. And one day Bill and I were having lunch at Oscars, and Charlie walked in, and Bill Fazé knew Charlie. Mm-hmm. And he said, would you like to meet him? And I said, sure. And we were, I was introduced to Charlie. And as I said, Charlie and I just hit it off right away. Oh, he remembered. Oh, that's, yeah. oh, that's <laughs> terrific. Yeah. Um, who greased the way for you, and who held you back in your early <laughs> days of, wow. of journalism? In journalism or in sports? In sport, yeah, in covering sport, sports journalism. And well, I, back in the, and in the early seventies, I think it was seventy-two or seventy-three. Um, I was doing freelance work for the San Francisco Examiner. And I asked if I could do a sports column. And, uh, of course, everybody cringed. Wow. Uh, but one of the editors thought it was a good idea, and he gave me a column called Women on the Sidelines. Um, that lasted about six weeks because um, I think the uh, examiner sports editor, I'm trying to remember his name, I think it was Roger Williams, something like that. And he absolutely abhorred the idea of my of me being a woman and writing on his pages. So he made me very uncomfortable. He closed all the doors for me to interview anybody. And uh, the column lasted about six weeks until finally he convinced the editors of the Examiner that they had to get rid of this woman. Hmm. Well, terrible. Well, who helped you? Who helped me? Um... Let's see. I'd have to think. Well, the Oakland Tribune was really good about it. There was a sports editor there named Bob Valley, and he liked the idea of women writing. And uh, I was writing a column on relationships. In fact, it was syndicated. Uh, but I love sports. I love baseball. And so I got to do a lot of color, color work for them. Whenever they had a special section, I would write a special piece for it. Uh, and so Bob Valley was very good about that. And, in fact, all the editors of the Tribune were really good about it. So that kind of helped me along. Mm-hmm. Marcy, did your son get into journalism? No, he didn't. <laughs> Not at all. A lot of other things, yes. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Just curious whether or not you passed that on. Um, and I was going to ask you whether or not you keep up with the game today. Oh, yeah. I try to watch as many A's at games as I possibly can. I'm a big A's fan. He is. And I want well, to say, I think Marcy's And Marcy you, like me, we were, and probably Nancy, were heartbroken last night. Uh, 
I thought it was one of the toughest losses of the season. They put up eight runs in in one inning, and um, and it was like Ken Cora called it. He said, "Wow, we're not scoring any runs, any more runs. Mm-hmm. I hope we could hold them off, and they they didn't." But you could uh, hear it in his voice. Well, I didn't watch the game, but I'm guessing, just a guess, that um, it was the bullpen that let him down. Uh-huh. Well, um, really, it it was. Um, Here's good, Marcy. <laughs> yes. Um, mm-hmm. Nostradamus Marcy. How did you know that? It was How, well, that because you, that's uh, what's been happening all year. I know. I know. <laughs> it's it's been uh, it's been terrible. Marcy, maybe we're going to have uh, Nancy promised us the owner of the A's is going to come on. The uh, president, now. Dave. Yes. Or the president. Um, but, the but from your standpoint, where do you think the stadium, and there will be a new one, they cannot possibly lose all three teams. <laughs> Oakland, I'm, I'm talking about. They, they're they losing, the, in the process of losing the Warriors. The Raiders are all but are gone, and they're just playing out the string. And they'll keep Oakland, Oakland A's. And um, from my from my standpoint, thank God they ca- it was the A's that they kept. Um, where do you think there'll be a new stadium? Do you think it'll be on the on the site, on the former site, the the one near Laney College, or where I would prefer it to overlook the San Francisco jam of a ballpark, right uh, on Jack London Square? Um, what do you think? Well, isn't the uh, favored site right now the, where the where the stadium is right now? Because that I, is I, the, the favorite. That is the favored site because it obviously it, everything's in place. Bart's Bart's there. If they but, do that, I'd um, like to see good good hotels come back in, or like you know, like we used to have, like the Hyatt. Right. That's true. It will rejuvenate the uh, Hagenberger Road. Yeah. Um, is that the exit, if, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah, straight. Um, straight it down. will rejuvenate that area um, tremendously. But a lot of these uh, cities are having success in rejuvenating their downtown area vis-a-vis San Francisco. Um building up all kinds of, you know, bars, restaurants, accoutrements around the stadium. People say, well, that does a lot. What does it do for the city? Well, what it does for the city, it increases the tax revenue that comes in. And um, so we'll see what happens. We'll I would see what thinking, happens. Wouldn't it be great to just create an island off of Alameda and put it there? <laughs> Make an island off of water. Alameda. <laughs> uh, Alameda was an island created in itself. It's a man-made island, so I we'd have another that. man-made island. I did not know Actually, that. Actually, oh, no. uh, if you could get people in and out of there, there's an ex- expanse of land out on what used to be the old base was really? turned over replete with radioactivity that um, – you could buy a Geiger counter or set it off oh. in Cleveland. From oh, radio. really? Radio. They re- that, it's impossible to clean up that stuff. It is? But well, they, God, what great real but, estate. It's great. It's prime real estate. And um, they, if, but you couldn't, get, you couldn't get folks in and out of there. Although the, there should be a way to have people come to a destination. Mm-hmm. And with their cars, their automobiles, where they could park, and then bust them into the stadium, so you you don't have the craziness. I don't know why city planners never never came up with. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, tell me I, why. I, I agree. I agree. Oh, okay. Planners, I go. I I rant about planning all the time in cities, but but with it, it's either you know have it where it is possibly or get it out on as far on the waters like 
to compete with what the Giants did. Right. Yes. Right. I'd, I'd love to see those two stadiums overlook each other. Oh, I know. I know. And, and, and you know, get it as far out in the water as possible. That's why I was wondering, do we have anything that could possibly branch off of Alameda like, like that? I didn't know that was so radioactive. Oh, well, that, they're claiming that they're cleaning it up and what have you, but by nature of the beast, the shifting tides make it virtually impossible to clear them. I mean, you you go into the stadium, you're not living out there. It's not going to uh, affect anybody. And um, uh, But whatever, that was wow. just a kind I of a throwaway imagine. line. Yeah. It's the traffic more than, than anything that precludes that from happening. Yes, we don't want to have a repeat of Levi Stadium. I'm hearing a lot of stories. That stadium's new. And there are, people are always complaining now about traffic. Right. Oh, I, you mean in Santa Clara? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so new. Um, I wonder. I wondered why they never named the stadium, the Oakland Coliseum, in honor of the Haas's Levi Stadium or Finley Haas or whatever. I know. Uh, they were making money well, by doing the um, sponsorships. Right. Yeah. The, um, yeah. But now it, I think they, uh, they've they named it the Ricky Henderson Stadium. Am I correct? Oh, no, right. it's not. It's the Ricky Henderson, Henderson Field. Field yeah, it? there's a portion of the field named for him. Right. Oh, oh, but they didn't. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, they I haven't named it. the didn't stadium. Name they're, the they're stadium. Portioning, yeah, they're portioning off bits to, you know, dedicate. Okay. So I, it, get, it can, I get There's that. a lot of stadium there, so it can still happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, uh, pretty soon, we got to get the Teddy Kubiak portion uh, of the stadium going. My, yeah. Our, mu- our mutual friend, mm-hmm. and um, then we'll have, so we'll sponsor that. Okay, Marcy, now I'm going to ask you some questions. When you first started covering baseball till now, changes that you like and changes that you don't like. Are you talking about rule changes? Because I can't keep up with those. Well, not okay. Well, just the overall state of baseball. How how do you think it's going? And um, what's going good? What's going bad? I think baseball's always going. I mean, that that really to me is America's America's game. I mean, kids have been playing baseball forever, and and um, it's a game that's easy to understand. It's it's fun to watch, and um, I think baseball's going great. I just wish they wouldn't keep expanding it. It's getting to the point now where baseball is being played. Into the into mid or late October, and that's not they, that's not past the boys of summer. Yes. yes, not not never past oh. Halloween. That's not right. <laughs> right. Well, um, that that's almost silly um, that late. And every year there are players that are out there with these with the headgear on the the um, muffin muff hats or whatever you know. <laughs> To cover the ears, and I mean that's that's, that's not, not right. baseball. And that's you know not baseball. More, and they should have more. Dating. It would be nice. I know it's never going to happen. We should have uh, kids should be allowed to watch the World Series during the day. So they're not going to stay up for it until all hours at night. But because um, Uncle they, Charlie, Uncle Charlie wanted night games, but he said yes, he didn't want I remember all that. Night. He didn't want all night games. It, why, it like went in the reverse. There should be more day games. And think of all the power that that uh, is taken up with these lights. They pay. We pay ten thousand a month to PG&E for night games. So hmm. if they had day games, uh, that would save on also the electricity. It would be greener, as they say. And um, yeah, but it's t- it's a it's a game run by TV and. 
you know, I'm just, it's just almost a fantasy at this point. I'd like to see double hitters, too. I mean, how many? Yeah, there used I, to be a lot of, oh, I remember those. I remember those. When, <laughs> you remember that? When the first one had tied up. Then the second one tied up, and you haven't eaten in 12 hours. And, <laughs> I mean, you're and waiting. all this there is ballpark food. Yes, yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, oh, my gosh, I thought, I wondered where the double headers went. Where did they go? Well, they went to, again, you could, um, revenue, you make more money by charging separate admissions. Even oh. the day-night double headers are, are separate admissions and even now sometimes when they make up games mm -hmm. they're separate ad admissions well, i'll stay quiet um, Mets had an exception earlier you asked in the marcy week. so i'll stay quiet mm -hmm. don't let me talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Marcy's, it's marcy's opinion okay well I, I just remember we were there in candlestick park the day that the uh, 1989 earthquake period happened um right and they they eventually sent us uh, a notice saying that we could get into the makeup game of the series for free. And we didn't have to pay extra for that to see another game of the World Series. Well, yeah. Right. Because the first game was uh, never played. But we had a heck of a time. What is that noise? I don't know. I, I was going to say I have never seen... I, I've never seen players wait six weeks to resume a World Series. That was really – I could see the difference in how they played. My picture of that is the players down on the field with their wives and their babies. Right. And in uniform, holding holding their children and with looks on their faces that uh, they're just human beings. It's like when um, – uh, Joe DiMaggio, a after the, the earthquake, was um, pictured just walking around with a, 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 what, when was a that? shopping bag. When was that? Um, which turned out to be filled with a whole bunch of cash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but what, what um, was And Fine. he was waiting online. He was just a, an unassuming gentleman. We're all human, and... Um, you know, tragedy strikes every everybody and everybody's family. And uh, was there another earthquake? earthquake in San Francisco years ago? Uh, pardon me, Nancy. I didn't was hear that. Was this another big earthquake in San Francisco years ago with Joe DiMaggio? Oh, well, this was in '89. Oh, oh, that's right. And, okay. okay. You know, you know what was really great about the '89. Uh, earthquake. There was one thing that was really great. What was it? It just showed real baseball players, real ba real baseball fans, because it was a horrible shaking of the stadium. Um, everybody looked around at everybody else, but as soon the minute that the earthquake ceased and the shaking stopped, everybody yelled, "Play ball!" Really? <laughs> yep. Everybody in the whole stadium yelled, "Play ball!" And then what happened? Because they didn't. And then they looked oh, out. Oh, no, the they field. did not. No, no, they they worried about the uh, structural integrity of the oh, stadium sure. itself. Um, yeah, I mean, the players they yelled, play ball, but they were quick out. They were quick out the door like everybody else. That, well, that, that the, was, the field was covered with police cars. They were they were not going to play ball. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, interesting. Right. I didn't hear that. Um, yeah. Mossy, what was your first story, your first byline? My first, oh, my first byline was written for the Stockton Record um, where I was working. I went I went to work for first. That was my first allegedly metro. Oh, and um, my first byline was I wrote a story about the fact that, it, that spring was coming. And I even remember my very first uh, line was, um, spring has come, the flowers riz, I wonder where the rest of them is. And um, that, that was my first uh, byline, and it was not, was not a baseball story or a sports story. And 
fact, I was writing for the women's department, which papers no longer have. I don't remember those. Could you give me a year to that, Marcy, without dating yourself? <laughs> oh, oh, sure. It was, um, let's see. I went to work for the record in 1965. 65. I was, okay. uh, if I tell you how old I was, I'll give away my age. <laughs> well, don't, don't do that. It's a secret. You know, <laughs> we're all ageless here. I came out to California. I joined the Air Force in 1965, as a matter of fact, and was stationed out here, uh, originally from back east. And um, so I'm no spring chicken either. That It doesn't matter. We have uh, seem to have what it takes to survive, which is uh, most coveted by folks, and that's the ability to think and reason. Um, you know, beyond your years. So um, that's a good thing. My son was in the Air Force. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Was he stationed at Travis? Uh, no, he was a survival specialist, and he was in uh, Fairchild Air Force Base in Spokane, Washington. Oh. And then he was down in Florida somewhere. I don't know the oh, name of the base. That's so good to know. Survival specialist. I want his number. Uh, that, that's good. Those are skills that carry on into civilian life. Mm -hmm. Did he get, stay in to uh, have a career? No, 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 no. He spent his four years and got out. He, okay. He, well, he designed that's basically video what games. I did. But, yeah. um, oh, hey. oh, Ralph, I want to tell you I had a review from the Hall of Fame, uh, my the speaker series overall, was uh, deemed, I guess, the, um, the most, uh, I guess, the best they've had. We, I received an email yesterday. Wow. Yes, it was Absol addressed. Hey, mm -hmm. uh, um, for those of uh, the folks who uh, didn't hear, Nancy, uh, would you review uh, where this is coming from? Oh, what I, I had a day in Cooperstown. I was invited to a today uh, for a day to do a presentation and book signing in Cooperstown, and they pick about nine authors for a summer, and they space them apart one week. So my day was August 9th, and I I had my day. It went really well, and yesterday all the authors together received a group email just to say it was the um, I guess the best most the best received since they started this and nice. uh, I yes it, it was really nice to see um, because I know their things are very conservative and for them to do that it means a lot I just loved getting that email nice just so. uh Keep it and uh, put it in the next book. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yes, yes. So they had they had a good turnout and they had a good response on the uh, I guess the variety of topics. That's what they said. Fantastic. Yeah. I think. Um, ladies, you've been terrific today, and Marcy, I hope you will come back and uh, come back continually. Marcy You're, knows a lot more and has a lot more opinions. <laughs> uh, well, um, it, I, I don't mean to cut it short, Marcy. Is there anything that's in your craw that you really want to get out there? I know um, opinion-wise, or um, and it doesn't really, at this point in life, it doesn't have to be baseball. Um, can you tell me your reaction? Your, um to what's going on in, to, in today's world, to the, the craziness. Hello. Hello. This is Marcy. I got cut off. Oh. Oh, okay. Yes. So I just uh, redialed. <laughs> well, okay. You're, okay. You're back. Marcy, I, I'm going to ask you. Uh, we're closing it out, but I want to know if anything um, that's going on in today's world is uh, 
shocking to you, and if you want to comment on how we're being put back uh, by the power that be, um, I'll ask you if you'd like to talk about that. Now, now talk about why we... What are we, are we talking about sports or politics here? Whatever. No, we're talking about life itself and how um, <laughs> we're closing out the show. And if there's anything, uh, Nancy said you have opinions, many, many more opinions. Oh, I have it doesn't have opinions. to be baseball. Is, <laughs> mm-hmm. is there anything about life itself that's uh, the way the world is turning out and that yeah. you'd like to comment on? It's pretty frightening, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, we're closing out, uh, but <laughs> that could go a long way. Yes, we could go a long way. Nancy, <laughs> Nancy, well, and I, cut. Nancy and I have talked about the fact that, you know, if you ever let us back in the press box, we have a lot to say. Oh, my God. Oh, um, nice. Nice that you do. And... Um, We'll have our press box right here as time goes on, Nancy. You can bring your friend back any any time she she chooses. I'm thank honored. You. Thank you. Marcy, thank you. Thank um, you. And, and everybody out there, um, we'll be back next week. And as I say, keep on keeping on. Perseverance um, is what it's all about. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now.